Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where we unpack, deconstruct, and critically examine all the things that we were taught to believe growing up in the Christian church. My name is Christy and today I want to talk about something that fascinates me. It's one of my favorite topics within deconstruction and that is morality. Specifically the claim that objective moral values exist within the Christian framework and come from the Christian God. I have come across so many arguments from Christian apologists, and I used to believe myself that if God does not exist, then objective moral values cannot exist. Because in order for a moral value to be objectively true, um, it needs to exist outside of the human mind, outside of human opinion. And so a lot of apologists will argue that um, if objective moral values do exist, if you can say that something is objectively right or wrong, well, then there must be something outside of us that has given those moral values to us. And I think they use this argument as a way to prove to atheists and non-believers that God does indeed exist, because if you can prove that God exists, well, then you can lead people to the Christian God. You got to get them to believe in God before you can show them what the one true God is. And I don't really want to go into objective versus subjective morality today. Day. That'll be for another episode. And I'm sure I will have a lot more videos on this complex subject of morality. But today, I want to kind of shine a spotlight on this claim that objective moral values come from the Christian God. I want to make the case for why I don't think that morality as defined by Christians is morality. I, I think that it's something entirely different. And so let's look at it. Let's look at the arguments. Let's unpack it and examine the system. And you decide for yourself if you think that objective moral values could even come from the Christian framework if they existed. So the perspective I want you to consider today is the possibility that Christian morality is not about genuine ethics. It is not about what doing what is right or wrong, but it is more centered around obedience, blind obedience to whatever God commands. Within the Christian belief, moral decisions are typically framed as unwavering obedience to the commands of God, doing whatever God says, being loyal and true and obedient to him, no matter what he commands, even if it goes against your own reason, rationality, or your own moral code. Is morality about making autonomous decisions based on reasoned judgment of right and wrong? Or is it all about obedience? Is it all about doing whatever God says, even if what God says is typically considered immoral? Does moral value derive from the inherent goodness of certain actions or from the fact that God commands them? Think about the most important aspect of being a Christian. What is it? Obedience. It's obedience. If you said love, you were wrong. <laughs> it is not love. Um, most of the Bible is not about love. And in fact, most of the Bible and the Bible stories and the lessons, um, especially throughout the Old Testament, are about obedience. It is about obeying God no matter what. No matter what he says, no matter what he does, um, no matter what position you're in, if he says it, you, you do it. You follow him wherever he goes. You don't question him. You, you just, you just do it. You just do whatever he says, obey, obey, obey. And they say, if you are subservient to God, if you are obedient to God, you will be called great in his kingdom. And so for so many of us, the most important aspect of that Christian faith is to make sure that you're obeying God. The very first story of humanity's relationship with God, Adam and Eve in the garden. What is the moral of that story? What is the lesson? Obey God, do what he says, because when you go against what he says, he curses you and all of your descendants. He curses all of humanity for your mistake. So that's that's a pretty big deal. He's making a very clear statement that if you don't do what he says or if you do what he doesn't say, um, that you will be punished, that you will suffer immensely. And so to me, the moral of the story with Adam and Eve is obedience. Um, God put a tree in the garden. He tempted them and he said, if you eat from it, you will die. I, I will kill you. I will kill everyone else. I will curse you and I will make your life miserable. Look at the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. I am your number one. Obey me always. Do not obey anyone else. Don't make any graven images. Don't worship idols. I'm the only one you're supposed to be focused on. I'm the only one you're supposed to be obeying. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Make sure you go to church. Make sure you listen to what the pastor says and make sure you obey me. Now, granted, I know there weren't pastors back then. This was not meant for Christians, but we're, again, looking within the Christian worldview, the Christian perspective. Obey, 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 obey. <laughs> Those are the most important rules. Um, funny how rape 
was not anywhere in those commandments. He did not command you not to assault other people. Um, but he did make it clear that women were property as you are not to be envious of your neighbor's wife. I'm getting off track there. So, um, but uh, the point I'm making is that for God, it's all about obedience. And when it comes to obedience, is that morality? Because if you are obeying, that is removing the personal decision making from the process. You can no longer make decisions within yourself about what is right and wrong. You have to just do as you're told, even if it's wrong. So right there, I think obedience is completely contrary to the concept of genuine ethical decision making. Now, another biblical story that's key takeaway is obey God even when it's wrong or immoral to be obey God um, is the story of Abraham and Isaac. Abraham was told, take your son up to the mountain, sacrifice him to me. I'll provide a way, but this is what you need to do. Now, if this was a true test of morality, of what is good and bad, right and wrong, if that was the test, I think that Abraham failed because in that moment, it would be up to Abraham to decide what is right and wrong. Is it right or is it wrong to take my own child up to the top of a mountain and sacrifice him? Is that the right thing to do? Even if God is asking me to do that, is that right? Now, if we're talking about genuine ethical decisions, if we're talking about true morality, then we're talking about um, a situation where Abraham should be able to determine if what is being asked of him is moral, but he doesn't do that. And what is Abraham praised for doing? He's praised for having faith, for being blindly obedient. And even in the face of being asked to do something absolutely violent and horrific and traumatic, he decides to put his faith in God and do what God says, regardless of the moral implications of his actions. And in church, we're taught that what's so great about this story is that Abraham had faith. Yes, God provided. God stopped him before he did something bad. But before we even get to that point, Abraham was willing to do something that all of us, I think, would consider immoral. If someone here on earth takes their child up to a mountaintop and sacrifices them to a God, we're probably going to punish that person. When God tells Abraham to do it, it's moral, it's justified. And I think there's a disconnect there. If something is immoral within our system that we've created here on earth, and it's blatantly immoral, but that when God asks you to do it, it is moral, doesn't that make morality obsolete? Because in that moment, the agency is removed from Abraham. And what Abraham is praised for is for blindly obeying no matter what. And so in that moment, he is not making ethical decisions. He's not coming to a judgment about what is right and wrong. He is saying, God says it, so I'm going to do it. And I think this can have really dangerous implications within individuals and societies. In the church, we're taught that Abraham had great faith. Faith was the virtue. And I'd like to argue that faith is not a virtue at all. But having blind obedience in something, even in the face of grave moral consequences, having faith in doing what God says no matter what, being obedient no matter what, I don't know how that can be virtuous. Does genuine morality require individuals to make well-reasoned decisions about what is right, wrong, and um, best for the overall well-being of other people? Is it based on empathy and reason and well-being? Are we coming to moral decisions based on how it affects other people? I think most of us agree that morality is kind of rooted in the well-being of others. You know, if, if I'm harming someone, then I'm not being moral. If I am helping someone, then I am being moral. And it's very nuanced and it's very complicated and it is not a black and white issue as a lot of Christians make it out to be. But in a sense, it, it boils down to that. It boils down to well-being. Am I good? Are you good? Am I being harmed? Are you being harmed? These are the things that we're considering when we're making ethical decisions, right? And I think most Christians would agree that that is how they come to decisions about morality. But then it switches within the, the Christian framework. It's almost as if they have two definitions of morality. 
One is their earthly morality, how they treat other people, how they expect others to treat them, um, how they expect society to behave. And they claim that these moral values stem from the Christian God, but then when they define morality within the context of the Christian worldview, that definition changes. It's no longer about making well-reasoned decisions and judgment based on the well-being of others. It's all about obedience to God. And if God says it, then it's good. It seems as though within the Christian moral framework that personal decision making about moral values is diminished or discouraged. It seems as though the goal isn't to come to reasonable conclusions about what is right and wrong, but it is to just obey. You are to obey your authority, you are to obey God, even if it goes against your traditional moral framework. I will never not be shocked by the number of Christians I've talked to that admit if God told them to kill their own child or to kill someone else, that they would do it. Because if God says to do it, it is good. Good and bad is not determined on well-being at all. It's determined on what God feels like, what God wants, <laughs> what his personal ideas of right and wrong are. But it seems like his personal ideas of right and wrong change. And he doesn't even seem to live up to his own moral standard. And we'll get into that in a minute. If you're doing what you're told, regardless of if it is right or wrong, and if right and wrong is determined by God, who can do bad things, or, you know, traditionally what we consider to be bad things, um, while also being morally perfect, then are we even talking about morality? Are we even talking about genuine ethics? Or are we talking about some sort of an authoritarian system where the authority gets to do whatever he wants, everybody else just has to lick his boots and obey? So that leads me to the biblical God and his own upholding of his own moral values. Does he abide by his own moral system? Or is he the worst offender of his own moral system? If he is the giver of moral values, if he is the one that designed the system, then he should be above the system. He should be upholding it perfectly. But all throughout the Old Testament and even into the New Testament, we see atrocities committed by the biblical God. Violence, war, bloodshed, cannibalism, uh, slavery, genocide, infanticide, you know, drowning the world in a flood, commanding his people to go up and march up to neighboring cities and attack or enslave them all, take the women and children as plunder and do with them whatever you please. And they'll respond and they'll say, but he's God. He can do whatever he wants. You're not God. You don't get to do whatever you want. He does. And whatever he says is good because he is God. And it's such a weird circular argument. They say God is perfect and holy, but he can do whatever he wants, even when it isn't considered perfect or holy here on earth, even when, you know, what he's doing is, is considered atrocious by our own moral standards and things that we would lock people up for. He can do those things and still be called good and righteous. And so I'm trying to figure out what good and righteous even means. Those, the, the meaning of good and right, that becomes obsolete. If you're saying that God can do whatever he wants, he can commit atrocities, he can do the worst of the worst, he can commit genocide and infanticide and command his people to go out and rape and plumage villages. If he can do that and still be considered righteous, holy, and good, then righteous, holy, and good have taken on completely different meanings, at least how I see it. If you're committing these atrocities, these violent atrocities, you can't be morally perfect. It doesn't align. And so we're, we're, all, we're completely um, dismantling what morality means. We're making the term righteous, holy, good, morally perfect. Those terms are becoming obsolete. There's no point in using those terms because those terms can't apply to God who commits atrocities while also condemning people who don't even come close to committing those kind of atrocities. We're told that we can't live up to God's perfect standard, his perfect moral standard, and that's why we deserve hell. But God breaks his perfect moral standard over and over and over again. I haven't done any of the things God did in the Old Testament. I have not committed genocide. I have never enslaved another person and treated them as property. But God has, at least according to the Bible. And Yet he is called morally perfect and I am called a sinner. And I am deserving of eternal punishment for not believing in him, for not upholding his law, but he doesn't uphold his own law. And why is he allowed to do that? Because he's God? 
because he created the universe, because he can do whatever he wants. Okay, sure, God can do whatever he wants. But that's different from being morally perfect. Being the authority overall does not automatically make you morally perfect, even if you are the giver of moral values. If you've determined there are a set of moral values and you say this is moral perfection, but then you don't abide by that moral for my that moral standard, then you are not being morally perfect by your own standard. And so for me, this raises so much doubt about the nature of Christian morality. God's wins <laughs> change what is right and wrong based on how he feels based on the situation it's it's situational ethics if god tells you to walk up to all of the surrounding nations and offer them peace but if they if they are peaceful with you to enslave them to force them to work for you or if they don't offer peace to just slaughter everyone leave no man alive and take all the women and children as plunder and do whatever you want with them. If he tells you to do that, that is morally perfect. That is a, a good command. But if I did that, <laughs> if I had a group of people and I told them to go around to all their neighbors and make sure you slaughter or enslave them, I would be put in prison. I, I mean, I, possibly killed. Um, I would probably not survive that because that is very morally atrocious. That is a bad thing to do. You shouldn't command people to go do those things. And so how come if a person does it, it is wrong, but if God does it, it's right. And you can't argue that God can do it and it be right because God is so holy and righteous when holy and righteous are defined by upholding morality. So let's summarize this. You have blind obedience in God. You have faith as a virtue, immediately disregarding moral decision-making, genuine ethical decision-making. Because to be blindly obedient, to have faith no matter what, um, and to do whatever God says, even when it goes against your traditional moral code, is so far outside the realm of actual morality, at least how we define it here on earth. We have a God who appears to be morally bankrupt if you're reading the text, and then you have his people who are claiming objective moral values from this God who are defending the reprehensible actions of this God. So they're claiming objective moral values exist, and that's why God exists, that objective moral values come from this God, that he is the one who has given us this moral code, that we are using our moral code to come to determinations about what is right and wrong here on earth. But then when we examine God within that same moral framework, he's not abiding by it. He's not fitting in the moral box. God is not upholding his own moral standard and Christians excuse it because he is righteous and holy and can do whatever he wants, but you can't be righteous and holy if you're not morally perfect. Basically, morality has been reduced to blind obedience. Blind obedience cannot be morality because that removes ethical decision making, which is a necessary part of, you know, determining moral values. And it really just makes the word morality obsolete. There's no point in using that word. That word does not apply, especially if you are going to give that word different definitions depending upon the situation. We're no longer talking about objective morality. We have just come so far from objective morality. Now we are just at a place where you must be blindly obedient. You must have faith and you must do whatever God says, even if what God says is immoral. And I used to believe this. I used to believe that God was the giver of objective moral values. I used to believe that his code was written in my heart and I had to get to a point where I thought, okay, well, if God wrote his moral code on my heart and I'm using my moral code to determine that things like genocide and infanticide and slavery and assault are wrong, well, then I have to apply that to, to everything because it is objective. That is the objective moral value, right? So if I'm applying that to God and I'm very clearly seeing that he's not living up to that standard, then I have to question the standard and I have to question him and his character and what this system is all about. And it really just boils down to God saying, do as I say, not as I do. What I do is good, no matter what it is, 
what you do is bad, no matter what it is. Thank you so much for watching. If you do enjoy my videos, please subscribe, please leave a comment, please give me a like. That helps me a lot. If you are interested in some of my merch, I'm actually wearing one of my shirts right now. Some of the designs are kind of irreverent and blasphemous and a little bit uh, snarky, but that is just kind of the way I like to be. And it's how a lot of us like to heal from our religious trauma. And so if you are interested in getting one of your own No God shirts or one of the other shirts that I have up at jezebelvibes.com shop, I will leave the link in the description of this video. See you next time.